Welcome back to another episode of Good Time Bikes, sponsored by Richard's Bicycles. And today I'll be reupholstering this 55-year-old Schwinn Stingray seat. It's definitely seen better days, and it's plenty torn up, dried out, and scorched summer after summer. So follow along, and we'll go through the step-by-step -step process that it'll take to get this looking brand new again. First things first, let's rip this nasty old wasp nest off of here. Get that out of the way. Next, let's look at where the two seat pans fasten together, because there's an inner seat pan and an outer seat pan. So we have the two points where the sissy bar meets, the piece of hardware where the seat post would go, and then these two tabs here and here. So let's first by drilling out the two points where the sissy bar meets. Next, we'll unbolt the nut that sits above the seat post. Now with that last nut removed, we can finally bend the tabs open in the front and back part of the seat. Hopefully mine don't break off because they're pretty rusty. Now theoretically, these two seat pans should separate, but they've been together for about 55 years, so it might take some doing. Finally looks like it's about to separate. Oh my gosh, there it is. Next, I'll drill out the two rivets in the back that hold the seat tag on, and that'll be time to remove this old vinyl cover. Now with the rivets drilled out, should be able to pop your seat tag free. With your old seat cover off, take a flat blade screwdriver, sneak it back there, and you can pop the rivets out and your seat tag will come right out. I'm actually going to reuse my old one, I think, even though I do have a new one on hand. There we go. Next, let's try to remove this old foam padding all in one piece from the bottom seat pan. Decades of rust. <laughs> well, I certainly hope yours isn't as bad as mine, but the next step for this one is going to get sandblasted. Okay, guys, it's a new day, and this is what we have as an end result for the pans. Here's the top pan. I actually had this one sandblasted and powder coated. Came out pretty nice. Uh, there's obviously a lot of ripples and a lot of texture to the top portion of the pan, and that's because of how rusty it was but there weren't any pinholes in it, so I'm pretty happy about that. 
and here's my bottom pan. Uh, this one I got sandblasted, and they actually worked around the sticker on the bottom, which was really nice. Uh, so I was able to keep that. Obviously, couldn't get it powder coated because uh, it would have burned the sticker off. So this one wound up getting primed and painted just with a regular spray paint can. Okay, it's finally time to start reconstructing this thing. Uh, we're going to start out really slow, just take it step by step. Uh, take your old foam and place it on top of your new foam. And we're just going to trace around it with a regular Sharpie marker and then cut it out afterwards. Now with that all traced out, we're done with the old foam. You can set that aside. And we're just going to use a normal pair of scissors. And I'm actually going to cut on the line. Don't cut on the outside because it'll wind up with a little bit too much foam. Okay, so let me pause for a second and tell you what kind of glue I used. I actually went to my local automotive upholstery shop and asked them, what do you use on the cars? And they actually gave me this, Stay Put. He told me to bring a glass jar, he'd fill some up for me, and I could buy it. And I gotta say, this glue works really well. Let's start by layering the top portion of the seat pan with glue, and I just use a cheap brush I'm going to throw away after the project's done. And for good measurement, I dab some onto the bottom portion of the foam that I'm going to be applying. Also pay attention to how fast your glue tacks up. Mine's about a minute, two minutes, and it starts to get tacky. Once the glue's nice and tacky, it's a good time to apply the foam to the seat pan. Make sure it's in the position you want, and press down firmly. I let mine dry for about 10 minutes before I moved on to the next step. I laid down some cardboard in case of any drips or spills in hopes of keeping my workplace a little cleaner. Here's our most important tool of the whole project, a blow dryer. And I blow dried everything for about a minute to get everything nice and soft and pliable so I can push the material into the position I want it in. So once I had the material soft enough, I would go ahead, apply my glue, and sometimes I would use a hair dryer again to make sure it stays soft while I'm moving it. And be sure that you have your seat pan centered in the position that you want it in on top of your cover at this point. And the first thing we're going to do is glue down the front portion of our seat cover. Then we'll move on to the back and the sides after that. Don't forget what I said about the hairdryer being the most important tool. You want to keep everything nice and pliable. It needs to stay warm. And notice here, I hold onto the front portion of the seat pan and I pull back on the material, making sure it's nice and tight. This is important for later. Once again, using the hairdryer quite a bit, it's key to keep this material soft. And notice I push down in the middle of the seat and I pull it over really, really tight. And this is important to keep out any wrinkles. You want everything to stay tight. Once again, same procedure, just touching up some spots in the back.
And again here I'm working on the sides again, but more of the front portion. And notice how tight I'm pulling everything. And remember, you got to keep everything warm and pliable. It's very important to keep that material soft so you can move it to where you want it. And if you guys noticed, I haven't used a single clamp, clip, or clothespin. I know there's a couple YouTube videos out there where they use 20, 30 clothespins or clamps of some sort, and it's really not necessary so long as you have the right glue. And once again, the material is very soft, and notice how tight I'm pulling this material and stretching it over the pan. And I like to hold it for about a minute, just to make sure it stays in place. And here it is, the last portion of the hard part of our project, just touching up the last portion of the front. Okay, now that it's starting to look like a seat again, let's go ahead and start doing our finishing touches. Here I'm going to add the seat tag and I just use a little uh, punch or a pick to find the holes in the back portion of the seat. And notice here on the second hole, I use the seat tag as a template or a guide to help me find the second one. And if you have a kit like mine, you have two pieces of hardware that look kind of like a rivet, and those just slide into the back to fasten the seat tag to the seat. Okay, now it's time to put our two seat pans back together. It's basically what we did in the beginning portion of the video, except in reverse. So what I'm doing here is just tapping down the two metal tabs with a hammer, and once those are secure, we can go ahead and put our nut back on and tighten that down with a ratchet. So what I did here was rest the seat on top of an aerosol can and some workshop towels, and that's when I was able to apply even pressure as I pushed down the bottom seat pan and tapped down the rear seat tab. Next I'm going to use a pick just to feel around to find out where the hole is for mounting the sissy bar, and you can even use a drill to help eliminate some of that extra material. And now you can finally slide that bushing through. And of course, finally, I have to apply the warning stickers for the bottom of the seat. You guys remember what this thing used to look like? All the decades of neglect and weathering and all the heat that it endured? Well, look at it now. This seat is beautiful and just about perfect. I'm super happy with the result and it's finally nice to have a good YouTube video on how to recover a banana seat. The only thing left for me to do now is to get the rest of the bike done and I can't wait to see this seat on that bike once it's completed. There you have it. That's how I recover a seat. And I know there's a lot of different ways to do it, a lot of different little techniques here and there, uh, but that's the way that I get it done. And boy, does that pay off. I know it gets a little messy, it's a little time consuming, but with a little bit of skill and a little bit of patience, it really, really does pay off. And not to mention how excited I am to get this old Stingray back on the road. But like, subscribe, and keep following episode after episode to see this Stingray come back to life. Thank you.